Joining us now is one of the most eminent and influential women in the field of material science and engineering. This is MIT's own Millie Dresselhaus. Millie, it's a pleasure to have you here. And it's a pleasure to be with you. Well, thank you very much. You are a pioneer in science, especially for women. So what are some of the changes you've seen over your long career in science? Well, there's been great ch changes in my field because, you know, when I started in, in the materials research world, uh, it was all about bulk materials. And the bulk materials that I knew about, uh, we didn't know a whole lot about. Uh, silicon started uh, just around World War II and it was necessary for the Allies in winning the war, so they did lots of research on it. Uh, and that led, of course, to research on 3,5 compounds, which is quite related to silicon. Um, and so when I got my first independent career job, you know, after my postdoc, I had to figure out what I was going to do. Uh, and that was a wonderful time. It was just after Sputnik, which was 1957, and the field was wide open. There was very little known, and all of a sudden there was money to do research. When I was doing my thesis, uh, we had, didn't have money. There wasn't much. Yeah, there wasn't much. And, uh, but just as I was finishing my, my thesis, PhD thesis in 1958, uh, it became clear that there would be more money in the field. And that was really important because we didn't have women in physics at that time. We were only 2% of PhDs when I got my PhD degree. So we were pretty much invisible in the field. And when was that? When did you 1958, I, I got my PhD. And I did, spent two years as a postdoc doing independent work. There was, I had no supervisor. I, I had a fellowship and I could do anything I wanted. <laughs> but uh, uh, I had discovered some new effect in superconductivity and I was pursuing that for the two years I was a postdoc. And what, um, what made you decide to get into carbon in the first place? Well, uh, uh, when I got my first independent f uh, uh, position, I was told that they didn't want me to work on anything I knew anything about. So superconductivity was therefore out and I had to start studying something totally different. And so people were studying new materials. Silicon was kind of a new material at that time, uh, but there were whole, whole lots of people doing that already. So I didn't feel I wanted to do the same thing as they were doing. And 3,5 compounds was the second next best for them. Uh, and I didn't want to do that because that also had a lot of people. So I, I started off doing something that was totally different, that nobody knew anything about. And people thought it was difficult and it would be difficult to actually work on it because it was much more complicated mm. seeming at the time than uh, any of the other materials that were studied by other folks. It didn't turn out to be that way, really, uh, because once you get into something, you find ways of doing things. Well, I'm sure it was difficult, but you made it look easy. Well, I don't know. I was, I was working on that project, actually, with my husband, and, and, ah. and the two of us had a lot of fun. Well, we understand you just won the, the Kavli Prize. I Tell me it. about that. That's a big honor, isn't it? Yes. Well, it was a great surprise. I was off at a conference, and uh, at the particular time of the announcement, I was chairing the session. Wow. <laughs> if, uh, at, the, at the conference, right. when somebody walked in and told me that they had to tell me something urgently. <laughs> so I went out in the hall with this fellow, and I gave my chair, chairmanship to somebody else for a couple of minutes. And then I found out that I had won the prize. Well, I came back to the room and continued with the uh, chairing the session. But uh, after I announced to somebody that I had won this prize, and they made a big announcement, of course. Well, it's at, kind of a big deal. Yeah, it was a big <laughs> deal. And so they made a big announcement at the conference, so everybody knew about it. Right. But I finished my duties pretty much, and then I went out in the hall and I started to um, find out, called uh, Oslo, 
say yes, I was here and I would yeah. accept the prize. Well, that's quite an honor. And, and then I found out I was the only recipient, which was kind of even even also, yeah. also surprising. Well, I don't know about better, but it meant that I didn't have to coordinate with anybody. Well, you are extremely humble, but I'm going to tell you, you're a pioneer in your field, not only for men and women, but specifically for women. As you say, when you started, there was only 2% of women going for graduate and doctorate degrees. We understand you're also a pioneer for your own granddaughter who's at MIT at this moment pursuing her doctorate. That's true, yes. Uh, she's working in chemistry. Uh, what happened when she applied? It's not uh, carbon, is it? No, 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 she's not working. I don't think there's much chance that she'll work on carbon. I, th I think she'd like to be it independent of her grandmother. Wow. And, and I think that's a good idea. I always encouraged her to be, you know, on her own. Well, you're quite a role model. Millie, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. And congratulations again on winning the Cavley Prize. Thank you so much.